today I'd like to cover um, how I'm going to solve the ADS-B out solution for this airplane. Um, you know that's all mandated, mandated as of January 2nd this year. ADS-B out is uh, required in class Charlie, Bravo, and um, class Echo above 14.5. <clears throat> so um, that needs to be done for this so I don't have any limitations on where I can fly it. So what I decided to go with is the UAvionics new product, the Tail Beacon X. Uh, this came out, uh, I think they probably launched it right around March or so. Um, it's an amazingly uh, unique instrument in that it's super small and really lightweight. The entire installation of the ADS-B transponder, antennas, and uh, out capability, 0.3 pounds. So you compare that to the next lightest solution I came up with and the other alternative I was looking at was the Trig TT22 bundle from Chief Avionics. Um, <clears throat> and that was an encoder, the antennas, the cabling, and the transponder was well over two pounds. So I'm saving two pounds in this installation, which when you're trying to save weight on a build like this and where weight's really crucial in this size airplane, um, to be able to save two pounds on something instead of just a couple grams here or there is a huge deal. I mean, that's, <clears throat> I don't want to get too excited about it, but I'm pretty excited about saving two pounds on the transponder. Um, in addition, the cost of this unit is about $2,500 and the cost of the bundle for the trig through Chief anyway was, uh, I think it was $2,690. So it is a, it's a less expensive option, does everything the same. And, um, in my particular case, it's controlled by the Grand Rapids Horizon 10.1 touchscreen EFIS. So all the transponder input, you know, if I want to put in a specific code or if I want to hit ident, turn it on, off, all that will be done from the EFIS it, it, itself. Now, if you guys are looking at upgrading or, or getting an ADSB out solution, you know, they have the Echo UAT, <clears throat> which is a solution that works with your existing transponder. But if you want to get rid of that weight of that transponder and say, get the weight savings that I'm doing here, you can take this unit and put it really anywhere on the aircraft. It doesn't necessarily have to go on the tail. I'm actually not putting it on the tail. I'm putting it in the vertical or the vertical stabilizer, and I'll explain why I'm doing that. Um, but you can put it pretty much anywhere, and it saves you the weight. And if you don't have an EFIS that can control it, there's two different instruments that come from UAvionics that will act as the control head for the transponder. They've got the AV20S, which is a two and a quarter inch gauge, fit your standard two and a quarter inch hole in your panel. And uh, it has a bunch of other features, clock and a bunch of other stuff besides just running the transponder. And then they have their AV30, which is what they recommend and what, which I would recommend as well. Um, it's a three and an eighth size instrument, so it go in your standard three and an eighth hole in your panel. And it is a complete EFIS in a round, nice little um, display. For those of you who want to upgrade to an ADSB out solution, the AV30 with the Tail Beacon X is the lightest and the most complete bang for your buck. And that AV30 is going to give you basically a full EFIS. So, that could be your primary EFIS display. It gives you all the information you would get out of your six pack instrument. And it also controls the transponder. So great option from UAvionics. I wanna thank them for their help um, getting this unit and uh, working through the specifics of trying to install it on a tube and fabric plane. A lot of what they're doing is for the certified world. And so I wanted to introduce it to you guys for the experimental world, mostly because of how uh, much weight you're saving by using this unit. So I've got some clips I'll go ahead and show about the install and why I chose to put it where I did. That's what I'm working on today. That's what we're going to cover in this video. So uh, follow along as we get that ADSB out solution taken care of. Came in this nice case, which is really cool. It's got the mounting hardware and it comes with this little ring right here. And I made this bracket. And the reason behind the bracket is because I'm actually going to put this inside the tail. Now you can mount it externally and get the beacon feature out of it, or you can shut the beacon off through a computer program and just use it as your transponder ADS-B out. Um, the reason I'm going to do that is because, one, I already had the, um, the beacon from uh, Aero LED, so I had that one already. But also the mount 
that goes that goes on the tail um, on any uh, tube and fabric plane you're going to have trouble mounting this um, through the tail without thinking about it prior making some special bracket for it so obviously this doesn't fit inside this one so a special bracket would have to be made and the concern then would be here's the rudder is it's going to stick way out behind it you could put it up on top. I'm sure there's a good place you could mount it. If if I had thought about it or had this in, in my possession prior to covering the rudder, I could have done something. But instead, I'm gonna put it right down inside the tail and I'm gonna mount it right there. That's out of the way of all the controls. There's fabric on both sides. And talking to them, the placement of it inside the fuselage as long as you are using fabric, it is not uh, not going to affect the signal at all. So that's what I elected to do on this one. Um, you could put it really anywhere. So there's that room behind the external bag or the extended baggage. You could have mounted it in there somewhere. You know, you could mount it up along here somewhere. Um, really, you could put it just about anywhere you want. I'm going to put it back at the tail because it is a, is a strong signal that goes out and getting it away from my head would is really a good idea, I think. Um, I don't know what the effects are there, but anyway. So the way this works, this pops into their mounting ring. There is a gasket that goes there to make it waterproof. And then a set screw goes into here and that locks it into place. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to mount it down on the that surface inside the tail. Um, I've made this bracket over the past couple hours and basically what I did is just put nut plates on the back, bent up a piece of aluminum. These nut plates here on the bottom will allow me to put screws up through the, piece, the wood that's in the tail and make it so it's removable. Uh, I thought about high sawing it in there, but in order to get that set screw out, it'd be easier just to undo these screws, pull the whole unit out if for some reason I need to get to it. Um, so there's a bracket that I made up for that. Uh, pretty simple, not much to it. I uh, used a whole saw to cut the hole and then just use um, nut plates. So anyway, pretty excited about getting the ADSB out situation figured. So again, that's going to go right down in, on that wooden plate that's down there. You can see the two holes that are already drilled, and that's where that's going to be positioned. I put the uh, uh, stabilizer in there just to see if uh, it's gonna have any interference and with the control cables and the trim motor, there's no interference where that's located. The wire's already been run and it is a four conductor, 20, uh, 22 gauge four conductor uh, wire. So that's gonna run up to the panel and this is that same wire right here. And so um, I will provide power and ground and then the other two will go and plug into the Grand Rapids, Rapids EFIS, and then I'll be able to use that EFIS to control the transponder. Really tight unit and super, super, super lightweight. So I uh, couldn't re recommend this setup more. It's awesome. Um, you know, the only disadvantage is it doesn't have the ADSB in, but Grand Rapids has that solution um, coming. So I'll talk more about that when it arrives, but I'll have a full ADSB in and out system, uh, lightest possible unit you can get on the market today uh, using the UAVionics and the Grand Rapids. Um, again, I just wanted to point out that this is your transponder, this part right here, um, has a GPS WAS antenna and ADSB out antenna. Okay, so the bracket was able to vibrate a little bit. So I went ahead and put an Adele clamp with a little support going out to the bracket. So now it's very sturdy. Uh, it doesn't move at all. It is wired up. It's got to secure all those wires. And uh, so that pretty much takes care of the installation of the ADSB out transponder.